of healing. So this is Doctrines of the Bible, study 135, and we're going to talk about the subject of healing. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for allowing us to be here this evening. I love you, Jesus. Please help us, dear Lord, as we study this important topic. Holy Spirit of God, please give me your power. I pray, dear Lord, for the mind of Christ. Help me to say exactly what you once said. And I pray, dear Lord, now for every person here to have ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to comprehend. And Father, please help uh, all of us to receive something from you. If there's anybody here that needs to be saved or anybody that needs to be baptized, please help them to make those important decisions tonight. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, I discussed um, a Bible study on the subject of hope, and the purpose of, or what inspired it, was my son, and uh, just what we were going through as far as just having hope. Uh, brother, brother uh, Sam, could you get Reyes a note paper? You don't, you don't have note papers, do you, Brother Reyes? If you could grab that for him real quick, and um, all right. oh, you have an extra one, Miss Kim. Okay, never mind, Sam, uh, Miss Kim had an extra one, all right? And so, but uh, at any rate, last Wednesday, um, God inspired me to uh, preach a message and teach on the subject of hope because, you know, sometimes we get in hopeless situations, and it was, it was pretty difficult for Jack last week, and, and I wanted to inspire myself and inspire you at the same time. Well, today is kind of along the same line. We're going to talk about the subject of healing because I want my son healed, and I figured the timing is right to teach on healing, and I also wanted you to be encouraged whatever situations you might face. A lot of us have health concerns, and, and so I, I want you to understand um, this time. I'm not a charismatic. I'm not a charismatic. I'm never going to be a charismatic, and I believe that a lot of times there are healing stuff that happens in some churches that is just not biblical. Everything that God does, everything that God does, the devil has a counterfeit. Everything that God does. You know what the Antichrist is? It's a counterfeit Christ. You know what almost all the modern versions are uh, in the English? It's a counterfeit Bible because it changes God's words. Well, what's a false plan of salvation? A counterfeit to God's real plan of salvation. And so everything that God does, the devil has a counterfeit, right? So, God heals, but the devil has a counterfeit healing too. I remember one time I was watching a television show of a television evangelist, and he was on the platform. Hundreds and thousands of people were in his service, and he was like, if you need healing, come up to the platform, and then all these people are coming up, and he's breathing on them. <sighs> Like this, you know, and they're all falling over backwards. You say, why? Because he had bad breath, that's why. Uh, but at any rate, but he thought it was a form of healing. There's nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in this Bible, does God tell a preacher to breathe on someone, have them fall over, and they're going to get healed. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. And so there are counterfeit uh, healings. Um, they're, they're, you know, you ever heard someone say, don't trust a faith healer that wears glasses? <laughs> you know, so, so, I mean, there's that, that thought, you know, too. But, um, but at any rate, uh, but God does have healing. And so I think sometimes independent Baptist, which is what I am, which is what we are, um, they're afraid of things because maybe a charismatic church or preacher might embellish something that that makes us nervous you know like like you know i i taught you many many uh, uh studies ago um on the subject of tongues um tongues is in the bible i don't believe for a second that tongues are of the devil but i do believe that the devil has counterfeit tongues and i and i had a whole study on it and i taught very clearly what biblical tongues are and so just because god just because the devil has a counterfeit doesn't mean we should just not embrace what God's word has to say about it, right? So we're going to talk about healing tonight. Some of what I'm going to say to you may be new to you, but I believe with all my heart this study I have about healing is biblical. And so let's look at it. And let's just go right down the line. Definition. We're going to define the word heal. The word heal. It means to be whole or entire the first definition, to cure of a disease or wound and restore to soundness or to that state of body in which the natural functions are regularly performed as to heal the sick. Number two, to cure, to remove or subdue as to heal, of, uh, heal a disease. Number three, to heal a sore or wound. 
Number four, to restore to soundness as to heal a wounded limb. Number five, to restore purity to, to remove um, feculence or foreign matter. So it's, it's talking about purifying. Number six, to remove as differences or dissension to reconcile as parties at variance, like to heal a relationship, uh, heal a breach or difference. And again, we're talking about relationship, whether it be with God or with man. And then number seven in scripture, to forgive, to cure moral disease and restore soundness on a spiritual level. Okay, so these are the seven different definitions in the Webster's 1828 American Dictionary of the English Language, and that's what we are going to focus on tonight as far as definition of the word heal or healing. Number two, a form of the word heal appears in 149 verses of the Bible. 100 and 49 verses of the Bible. And I looked at every one of these verses in preparing this Bible study. And so now there's like six, I think it is, six or seven different variations of the word heal that are used in the scriptures. Number three, now let's get in the application. God wishes for us to be in good health. God wishes for us to be in good health. Third John chapter one, verse two, beloved. Now this is scripture, so this is God telling us, right? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Okay, what God is saying here is above all things in life. He wants you to be spiritual and healthy. The, the words, um, as thy soul prospereth, that means for your soul to be spiritual, to be in tune with God, to live in God's will, to be spiritual in your soul. But he says, I also wish that you may prosper in health. That means to have good health. I do not believe that God's original intention for mankind was for us to struggle so much with our health. I don't believe that for a second. I believe that above all things, God wants us to be in good health. And so this is God's design. This is God's plan. Now, um, you've got to look at the scripture, by the way, not through the year 2024. You've got to look at the scripture through the year of, you know, glasses of 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, there were no Walmarts, no grocery stores. There was no processed food like what we have now. No ramen noodles. Those things are absolutely of the devil. I'm just going to tell you that right now. I will never, ever, ever again in my life, and it's been years, ever eat ramen noodles. That stuff is the, some of the most unhealthy thing that you could possibly eat. I know it's quick and easy, and maybe it tastes okay, but your, your stomach, it takes like three weeks to digest all that stuff that's in ramen noodles, and it's not healthy for you at all. But you look at the standard American diet in, in America, and, and it's the acronym SAD standard American diet that's also sad it's really really sad you think of all the junk food there's look why don't why do you think McDonald's and Burger King and Taco Bell and all this stuff is called junk food it's because it is junk it's not healthy for you at all. And back in the Bible days, 2,000 years ago, there were no golden arches or junk food, okay? So when you look at God's talking about health, talking about food in the Bible, try not to think of it like, like for example, when God says all meat is good, I mean, all meat is okay to eat because it's sanctified by the word of God in prayer, right? God didn't have in mind a Big Mac. He didn't have in mind you know, um, uh, uh, processed meat, imitation meat, spam, you know, whatever. Uh, when he said meat is, is, is sanctified by the word of God in prayer, you know, he wasn't talking about meat with chemicals doused in it, you know, like what we have now, right? So for someone to say, okay, it's like this. When people say, well, Jesus turned water into wine, so it's okay for me to drink Budweiser, that's like saying, you know, the same thing. Uh, Jesus said all meat is okay while you eat your quarter pounder with cheese or, you know, you, you know, filet a fish sandwich from Big Mac, you know, from McDonald's, right? It's not the same thing. So you've got to understand this in light of 2,000 years ago glasses, okay? So, but the original plan for God is that for us humans to be in good health, okay? Number three, uh, God wishes for us to be in good health. Number four, God is the great physician. 
God is the great physician. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39, um, God is quoted as saying, See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. Okay, now time out. I've had a bunch of people say to me in recent weeks, is God the God of all these other gods that are on the level of God, but he's the, the chief God, and there's all these other gods, and then there's angels, and then there's humans, right? No, there is no other God. That's what it says right there. And it's lowercase g, by the way. He said, there is none other. He, he says right here, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. When people say in Genesis chapter 1, where God said, let us make man in our image. God was not referring to a bunch of other gods and all these gods getting together. Let's make man in our image. No, that was the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God, or God the Word, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, it was the counsel of God himself, the Trinity, right? So when you see here, it says there is no God with me. That means God is alone in the realm of God. Amen? It's pretty simple to me. Pretty simple to me. People want it to be scientific and Hollywood and fantastic and, well, there's gods and other galaxies and, you know, none of that, man. Just none of it. There is no God besides the Lord. Now, he said, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. And then Psalm 30, verse 2, O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. So number four, God is the great physician. Nobody is a better physician than God. And if you need help, look to him first. Number five, number five, it is okay to see a physician if you pray to God first and he directs you to do so. Number five, it is okay to see a physician if you pray to God first and he directs you to do so. Now, let me give you an example of someone who didn't do it right. Second Chronicles 16, verses 12 and 13. And Asa, in the 30 and ninth year of his reign, was diseased, look what it says, in his feet until his disease was exceeding great. Now watch this. Yet in his disease... He sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in one and fortieth year of his reign. Okay, so here's what God said about Asa. Asa was a good king, by the way. He was a righteous king. But he made a mistake here. He got a disease in his feet. It was exceeding. And he said, get me a doctor. He didn't say, get me to God and see what God wants. Now, this is not saying all doctors are bad, but I'm just going to tell you, if you're God's child and you get a health issue, you better seek God first, and then if he directs you, then go to a doctor. Look what it says about Luke, Colossians 4, verse 14. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. So here it is. There is a Christian doctor in the Bible, Luke. He's the one that wrote the Gospel of Luke. He's the one that wrote the book of Acts. And God refers to Luke as the beloved physician. So all physicians are not bad. Physicians are okay. But make sure and go to the great physician first when you have a need. And then get peace in your heart about going to an earthly physician. That's the way it's supposed to be. So here's Asa. He says, he, and God made the point. He sought not the Lord in his disease. All he did was go to physicians. What do, you, what do you think I should do? And then he ended up dying with that disease because he did not seek the Lord. So just understand it's okay to seek a physician if you pray to God first and he directs you to do so. Number six, Jesus was a healer while on earth. Jesus was a healer while on earth. Matthew 4, 23 and 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that 
had the palsy and he healed them. So, listen this carefully, Jesus was a healer while he was in his earthly ministry, while he was on earth. And, and, and it just tells about all of it in the Gospels, okay? Number seven, Jesus healed by speaking the word. Jesus healed by speaking the word. Matthew 8, verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Now, you need to believe that. When you pray to God, just say to him, Lord, I have this health issue, or my loved one has a health issue. Speak the word. That's all that's needed. Just speak the word, Lord. And when you put faith, and by the way, this man who said that, Jesus said of him, I have not seen so great faith in Israel. He says, in my own people, this was not an Israelite, this was a Gentile. In my own people, he said, they don't have that great a faith. But here's what he said. You don't need to come to my house and heal my servant. Just speak the word and he'll be healed. And that's the kind of faith you need. You need to go to God in prayer over your own health issues or health concerns of others and just say, Lord, speak the word. That's all I'm asking and it'll be done. So Jesus healed by speaking the word. Number eight, the 12 disciples were given power to heal. The 12 disciples were given power to heal. Luke 9, verses 1 and 2 and, and 6. It says, Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. By the way, just a little side note, Judas Iscariot had power too to heal, and he did. Can you imagine if, if um, you know, because at the time nobody knew that he was the betrayer of Jesus. Nobody knew that. And so can you imagine how Jesus said to all 12 apostles, you have power to heal, and then he didn't? I mean, it would have been a red flag. Somebody would have said something, right? But I believe that Judas Iscariot, even though he wasn't a legitimate believer in the Lord and he ended up betraying the Lord, he was among the 12 that were given the power and the ability to heal. So Jesus was a healer on earth and then he gave the 12 disciples the ability uh, to heal as well. All right, look at um, number eight. Number eight, the 12 disciples, uh, no, we already said that. Number nine, great multitudes followed Jesus because he healed. Great multitudes followed Jesus because he healed. Matthew 19, verse 2. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. Great multitudes followed him because he he healed. So, you know, if someone is a legitimate healer, that's pretty attractive, isn't it? And the Bible says in another verse, I don't have this on here, but every single person who came to Jesus for healing, they all got healed. He was an amazing healer. By the way, for people who call themselves faith healers today, I wonder if they could say the same, because the same thing with the disciples. Every person, every person that Jesus commissioned them to go out to have power, they all got healed. And so, you know, I, let me ask you a question. Okay, can I just be honest with you? Think about things logically. If all these faith healers in the world today are legitimate, why don't they go to hospitals and just heal everyone that's there? Do you ever think about that? Why do you have to come to their services and be healed in a fancy way on a show, on a stage? Um, Jesus healed people individually. He went to their homes if someone did have the legitimate power of being a faith healer, they should go to every single hospital that they can and just start healing everybody. They really should. And, and, and it's just things that make me think that maybe it's not all legitimate, if that makes sense. Okay? Um, number 10, Jesus is compassionate toward the sick. Jesus is compassionate toward the sick, Matthew 14, 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. You know what that tells me? Jesus does care when you're not feeling well. He has compassion in his heart if you're sick. 
He was moved with compassion on these people that were not well. You know, I've been, my, my son, I, I spent the night with him in the hospital last night. and I got there about 6.30. And from 6.30 to 3.30, he was just fine. I mean, he was, now, he slept a lot of time. 6.30 to 9.30, we talked. We uh, were watching some, some television together and talking and such. And uh, he seemed like the jack of old, just the jack of old, just the same spirit, same, he was able to talk, he was able to eat, ordered a big dinner, had it at, you know, ate, and then he fell asleep at 9.30, and then, then I fell asleep, and then he woke up at 3.30 with this intense pain, and he was groaning, and he had a fever of 101 when he would cough, his chest hurt, and it's because of the pneumonia in his lungs, and he was, you know, calling for the nurse to come in, and all right, we'll come in and give you some morphine, and it took him like 10 minutes to come in, and the whole time he's groaning and everything, and my heart just ached for him. I mean, I didn't want my son to just sit there and be in pain. He got a fever, he got a headache, and he was having a hard time breathing again, you know. And, and God is the same way towards us. God has compassion on us when we're not well. And every mom and dad here, when your children are sick, you have compassion on them. And that's how God is towards us. Next. Now, have you ever heard someone say, you know, the gifts of healing were apostolic signs? Well, that's not the case in this verse. Ready? Now, this is during the time of Jesus. Number 11, Jesus appointed, look what it says now, 70 to be able to heal. 70. How many apostles were there? 12. That's less than 70. Look at Luke 10, verses 1 through 9. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70. So we got the 12 apostles, and now other 70 also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whether he himself would come. And we use this as a reference for soul winning, and that was partly what they were supposed to do, but not entirely. Look at verse 2. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he had send forth laborers into his harvest. Again, soul winning. Praise God. Look at verse 3. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Now, he's telling these 70 what to do, right? Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. And he wasn't saying go not from house to house soul winning. He was saying go not from house to house to eat, you know, and have your needs provided, you know, labor's worthy. Just go to the house that, that, that's provided, stay there. And then look what it says, verse 8. And in a whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And, now this is the other 70, not just the 12 apostles. And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. So here's a verse where Jesus had his 12 apostles, and then there were other 70. That means now it's at least 82 that Jesus is given the ability to heal. And these other 70 are not apostles. Okay? So he said, you know, harvest is great, laborers are few. He's obviously wanting them to go soul winning. But he also said, heal the sick that are therein. Okay, so it's wrong for us independent Baptists to say the gifts of healing was only for the apostles. That is not true because this right here is proof that at least 70 other people were given the gifts of healings as well. Next, number 12, the sign of healing was given because of the Jews. The sign of healing was given because of the Jews. Now, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 22, for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Now, the word Greeks there is also in reference to Gentiles. It's a, a synonym. So the only people that require a sign on the planet are Jews. Everybody else seeks for wisdom. Now, let's continue. Keep that in mind, okay? Mark chapter 16, verses 14 through 20. Again, this is a passage that has been greatly misunderstood. And 
to be honest with you, independent Baptists have been afraid of this passage, at least the ones I've heard preach on it. Look at Mark 16, 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven, now minus Judas Iscariot, as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief. That means he preached at them, ripped their faces off because they didn't believe. And hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said, now after he ripped their faces off, that what, that's what it means to upbraid. Verse 15, and he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, it, it doesn't stop there. Okay, that's the Great Commission, but it continues. It goes on to say, he that believeth, now, we're not talking about the 11, we're talking about people that they preach the gospel to and they believe, right? That's what we're talking about. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Okay, so that doesn't teach baptism is necessary for salvation because you're only damned if you don't believe in Jesus, right? Doesn't say and is not baptized, but at any rate, that's just neither here nor there. That's a different topic. Now, look at verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, if you take this in context, it's not talking about the, the 11. It's talking about those that are being preached the gospel to that do believe. Does that make sense? Okay, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, this is talking about the 11 going out, preaching the gospel, and the people who believe, they, they receive Christ, then they have these abilities. Now, I watched a YouTube video uh, just recently about this one church down south that they're dancing around holding these snakes and stuff. And they, they were taking poison and drinking it and jumping up and down and doing all kinds of crazy nonsense. Listen to me very carefully. That is not what Jesus is talking about here. Not at all. Uh, is there a biblical example of someone who handled a snake and, and it didn't harm him? Is there a biblical example in the New Testament? Paul. Now, was he grabbing a snake, dancing around, saying, y'all look at me and see what I'm doing? <laughs> He was putting wood in a fire, and a viper came out and bit him on the arm. And the Bible says he shook off the, the beast into the fire and then kept on about his business. He wasn't looking for a snake to do a fancy show. That's, that is so Im, Im, an imposter, immature. It's just wrong. And the people that observe Paul, the barbarians, go, oh, he must be a murderer because vengeance suffereth them not to live, even though he escaped the storm. And then he didn't die, and they said, oh, he must be a god because the, you know, he didn't die from that venomous snake. Well, this is what that was talking about. And then it talks about drinking poison. That means someone trying to poison them, not them just grabbing poison and saying, look, I got the gift. I'm going to drink this poison, and it won't kill me. That's not what it's talking about. Amen. This is just talking about protection from attack. Now, let's continue. Verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. And look what it says. Confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Okay, now watch this. Who requires a sign? Jews. What do Greeks, uh, Gentiles require? Wisdom. So while they were in Jerusalem, while they were in Judea, while they were in Samaria, witnessing and preaching to Jews, and you'll read the book of Acts, in front of Jews, they were preaching to Gentiles. The signs followed them because God wanted it to be a testimony against the Jews that they were not believing correctly. So, again, it's not just the 12 that had the gifts of healings or the signs. People say these are apostolic signs. I, I, just, I just disagree. I just disagree. Because if you take Mark 16 in context, and again, Baptists need to stop being afraid of the Bible. Just don't be afraid of the Bible. Just because somebody is a counterfeit doesn't mean that it's not in the Bible. But again, I don't believe signs are for Gentiles. So therefore, like in America, typically speaking, you know, God's not going to give us this sign 
to display because Gentiles don't require it. They're not looking for that. Why was it happening there? Because of the Jews. And God was trying to show them Jesus is the Messiah. Christianity is legitimate. And these signs, if they didn't believe, then it would speak against them. Because Jews required a sign. Here's a sign of healing. And you still don't believe. Well, what does that say about you? You're stiff-necked and stubborn. That's what it says about you. And so, anyway, that's my belief because I think I understand the Bible in context. Number 13. Our spiritual condition has a lot to do with God healing us. Our spiritual condition, you say, you know, say preacher, what do you think? In 2024, can people be healed in a miraculous way? The answer is yes. Yes. People that say, the, you know, the gift of healing has expired. You'll not find one verse that says that. And we're going we're gonna to see it later. We're going to see it later. But again, it's not this counterfeit stuff. Again, if these faith healers were legit, why aren't they going to hospitals and healing everybody that is sick in the hospital? Um, number 13, our spiritual condition has a lot to do with God healing us. Matthew 13, 14, and 15. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. Here's why. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart. Watch this. And should be converted, and I should heal them. Why are they not getting healed? Because their heart is waxed gross. Their ears are dull of hearing. They won't open their eyes to see the truth. And God says, that's why you're not getting healed. Because their spiritual condition was contrary to Jesus. Not receptive of Jesus. Amen. Number 14. Unbelief hinders our healing from God. Unbelief hinders our healing from God. Mark 6 verses 1 through 6. And he went out from thence and came into his own country and his disciples follow him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are, are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and, and Simon? Those are the names of the four brothers of of Jesus, by the way. And it says, and are not his sisters here with us? We don't know how many, but it says sisters. That means more than one. And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. <laughs> Hence me as a pastor. Having, you know, just difficulty with my family sometimes, you know, believing me. It's the same thing that Jesus went through. His brothers didn't believe. Not until after the resurrection, but let's continue. Oh, and by the way, that's why sometimes people in this church disrespect me. Sometimes teenagers disrespect me. You know, they don't, they don't appreciate me. They don't, uh, they don't want to listen to me. I'm like, oh, oh, pastor again. Again, it's just human nature. It's wrong. Prophet is not without honor except in his own country, his own house, among his own kinfolk. It's sad. Now, it doesn't have to be that way. But human nature is that way. And it's sad when it happens in this church or in my family or whatever. But nonetheless, let's continue. Um, it says here, um, they were, uh, verse, let's reread verse 3. Is not this the carpenter's son, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah, Simon, are his, not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. You, you know, you could even add, and in his own church. Same thing. Now, look at verse 5. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. What hinders healing? Unbelief. And by the way, I have no problem if someone in this church doesn't respect me. I'm going to keep doing what God wants me to do. 
I'm just going to keep being the preacher that God's called me to be. And if I don't have the approval from certain people, then I just don't. But uh, I'm going to keep believing that I am God's man. I'm going to keep going soul winning. I'm going to keep doing, preaching the word of God truthfully. And some people just don't, don't you know, not, not everybody, obviously, many of you love me and respect me and i appreciate that very much but you know even brother house even brother house had people when he was alive preaching that wouldn't listen to him in church they misbehaved i used to sit there in the pews at first baptist and go what in the world the greatest pastor that's ever been on american soil and there's college students misbehaving and talking and fooling around or sleeping and not listening to the greatest preacher that i've ever met and heard and listened to in my lifetime well, it's just human nature, you know, just human nature. But I, it, doesn't, it doesn't make me feel inferior. Or, you know, I don't have a complex about it. I'm just going to keep plowing away and doing what God wants me to do. Look at Acts chapter 14, verses 8 through 10. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, now watch this, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet, and he leaped and walked. Now listen just carefully. Unbelief hinders our healing from God. Why do you think that the Bible says that Paul said he perceived that he had faith to be healed? Why? Because faith is a requirement to be healed. It's a requirement. Now, I'm not saying, you know, that name it, claim it stuff. You know, that's not what, I don't believe this is talking about. But it is obvious that these certain people in, his home, in Jesus' hometown were not getting from God what others did because of their unbelief. And then here's Paul saying, this man has the faith to be healed, and then he got healed. So, unbelief hinders our healing from God. Number 15, it always helps to get to Jesus when in need of healing. It always helps to get to Jesus when in need of healing. Mark 5, verses 25 through 29. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. You see how she spent all of her money on physicians and didn't get healed. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Why? Because she got to Jesus. If you're in need of healing, I recommend very highly that you, it helps to get to Jesus. It'll never hurt you, believe me. Number 16, the power of the Lord can heal. The power of the Lord can can heal luke 5 17 and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that they were that there were pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of galilee and judea and jerusalem now watch this and the power of the lord was present to heal them what needs to be present for people to get healing the power of the lord and I'm going to tell you this right now, God's power has not dissipated in 2,000 years. Our God is just as powerful in 2024 as he was during the time of Christ. What is necessary? The power of the Lord is necessary. All right, let's continue. Number 18. Now, I believe this, and some people maybe have never heard this before, but I believe it to be true with all of my heart. Oh, I got that, I got that out of order, man. This is really number 17, but it says number 18. It's kind of like those uh, new modern versions that erase verses and just keep on. <laughs> this is actually a mistake. It should be 17, but it says 18. I'll fix it on my computer. Number 18, unclean spirits may be the reason for diseases. Unclean spirits may be the reason for diseases. Luke 16, 17 through 19. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him, and he healed and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. 
Luke 8, 2. And certain women which had been, in, uh, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. That was a certain woman, Mary Magdalene. Luke 9, 42. And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him, and Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. Not all the time, but sometimes the sickness or disease is a result of an unclean spirit in our lives. We need to be aware of that. It may be some of our health concerns that we struggle with is because we've opened a door to a bunch of unclean spirits. Now, you say, well, this is 2,000 years ago. Let me ask you a question. Do you think unclean spirits went away? <laughs> They're still here, aren't they? Well, the devil knows no new tricks. So back in the days of Jesus, unclean spirits caused people to have infirmities or diseases or problems with their health. And the Bible says as he healed them, he healed them of the unclean spirits. Sometimes I think some of the health concerns we struggle with in America is because we have too many evil spirits in our lives. We just do. And if we do, we need to be aware of it. And we need to address it. I'm not saying every sickness is because of an unclean spirit, but you've got to at least acknowledge the possibility. And part of God's healing is to get rid of these unclean spirits. Let's continue. Number 19. The Holy Ghost can heal those who are oppressed of the devil. The Holy Ghost can heal those who are oppressed of the devil. Acts 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Now the Holy Ghost filled Jesus anointed Jesus, and he healed those who were oppressed of the devil. Again, you know what the, a typical knee-jerk reaction of independent Baptists are? Well, that was in the time of Christ, and all of that's not, not, it's not an issue now. None of it is relevant now. You won't find a single verse that says that. You know why preachers say that? Because they're afraid of the Bible. They're afraid of the Bible, and they don't want to be labeled a charismatic. Now, I'm a Bible believer. I'm not a charismatic, but I do believe the Bible is still valid today. I really do. Next, number 20, always glorify God if you are healed. Always glorify God if you are healed. Luke 17, 12 through 17. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice glorified God, fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? How foolish those nine were. They didn't come back to give God glory. If God does heal you, or if he heals a loved one or a friend of yours that you're praying for, always give God glory. Always do it. Always do it. Number 21, sometimes God chooses not to heal us. Sometimes God chooses not to heal us. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me. Again, this is an evil spirit coming and hurting Paul. Lest I should be exalted above measure for this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that's health concerns, by the way, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches, in necessities and persecutions and distresses. And here's the caveat. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Okay, here Paul had a disease in his eyes, and he was losing his eyesight. And three times he came to Jesus and said, would you please heal me? And Jesus said, no. So sometimes, if you're living for God, and you come to Jesus for healing, he may not choose to heal you. Instead, he may choose to give you grace 
so that you can have more of the power of God in your life than if he did heal you, okay? So sometimes it's just not God's plan to heal you. Now, you can't sit there and say, well, Paul wasn't right with God. No, Paul was right with God. He wrote 14 books in the Bible. God used him in a great way. So it wasn't like he wasn't right with God, yet God had a purpose for allowing that eyesight disease disease in his eyes, okay? So for us, if we live for God, sometimes God chooses not to heal us. Number 22, a broken heart needs healing. A broken heart needs healing. Luke 4, verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus speaking. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel of the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Psalm 147, verse 3, he healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. I promise you this, if you have a broken heart tonight, God can and he wants to heal you. He wants to. You don't have to have a broken heart forever. You can get healed of it. If you want to come to him, that's what he wants for you. You've got to let him have his way in your life. Next, There's a formula for biblical healing, number 23. There is a formula for biblical healing. James 5, verses 14 through 16. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, this is the practice of anointing with oil by the men of God in the church. It's a formula that is biblical. And whenever anybody needs healing, I I don't mind at all. Brother David and I, we can meet in my office. We'll anoint you with oil. We'll pray for you. It's not going to be a big fanfare. It's not going to be like you come on the stage and I breathe over you and you fall over backwards or anything like that. Pastor, get some mouthwash. But anyway, um, the fact of the matter is this is a formula. And I, when my wife, you know, had her gallbladder issue, we, David and I anointed her with oil and prayed over her. Now, it just so happens that God chose not to heal her the way that we hoped. Now, she is healed. But she had to go see a physician, and she had to get her gallbladder removed. I've been, um, you know, obviously praying for, you know, for Jack, and he, he's not requested, you know, for me to be anointing him with oil, so I haven't, you know. But, but this is what it says, let him call for the elders of the church. That means they got to request it. Anointing them with oil, praying over them, and it says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, this is biblical, and I'm going to I'll put my hand on the Bible and say this. There's nothing in the Bible that says this is expired. I think it's still valid. All right, let's continue. Number 24, we need spiritual healing from Jesus. We need spiritual healing from Jesus, not from him to heal us spiritually. Isaiah 53, verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. With the stripes of Jesus on on Calvary, we can be healed. And this is, I believe, talking about spiritual healing. Number 25, revival brings national healing. Revival brings national healing. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, one of the most famous verses about revival. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Revival brings national healing. I think America needs some healing right now. And I'm not talking physically now. (sighs) Remember one of the definitions of healing was relationships? You need revival in our country. Number 26, our bodies often or can often heal themselves provided the right fuel. Our bodies can often heal themselves provided the right fuel. I wish I could take two hours or three hours on this one point. I don't have time, just I got a few minutes, but listen to me carefully. You don't have to be sick all the time. You don't have to be sick all the time. Are you listening? You don't 
have to be sick all the time. Stop thinking that I'm just sick and this is just the way it's going to be for the rest of my life. It doesn't have to be that way. Let me read you some verses. Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. God made you fearfully and wonderfully. He made your body self-healing. You have the capability. What is it that you need? You need the proper fuel. Oh, I forgot to say that. I'm sorry. Our bodies can often heal themselves provided the right fuel. That's, I, if I forgot to say that, um, fill in the blank, the right fuel. Our bodies can often heal themselves provided the right fuel. Your body is fearfully and wonderfully made. Did you know that every cell in your body is remade every seven years? Did you know that? Every single cell in your body is remade every seven years. You say, how is it remade? By the fuel you provided. The fuel. Remember junk food? You're going to have a junk body? That's true. You are what you eat. You ever heard someone say that? It's true. Let's look at some of the ways that God can heal us. Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 22. My son, attend to my words. Don't forget that, my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. We're talking about the words and the sayings. For they, the words and the sayings, are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. The words of God, the sayings of God can heal you if you embrace them. Proverbs 16, 24. Look what it says there. Pleasant words are as in honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. You know why some of us are not healthy? Because we don't listen to enough pleasant words. You listen to the world's music enough. That's probably one of the reasons why your health is so poor. You listen to a bunch of negative Nancys and pessimistic Pete's. <laughs> negative, 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 negative. You listen to that enough. That's why I don't watch the news. Everything's negative. Negative this, negative that, negative this, negative that. It says pleasant words are health to the bones. Your body will heal itself if you start listening to pleasant words. Proverbs 17, 22, look what it says. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. If you have a merry heart, you're going to feel better. If you're depressed and discouraged, your bones are going to get dry. That's Bible, folks. You don't ever wonder why I tell dad jokes all the time, because I want you to laugh and have a merry heart. I forgot to tell you my dad joke. Do you know the difference between ignorance and apathy? Do you know the difference between ignorance and apathy? I don't know and I don't care. Let's continue. All right. <laughs> All dad jokes have truth with them, man. Come on now. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but when you're depressed and discouraged all the time, it drieth the bones. And by the way, when your bones get dry, you get sick easier. It weakens your immune system. Look at Isaiah 58, verses 6 through 8. Is not this the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke, is not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou, may, uh, that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Watch this now. Then shall the light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. What is it talking about here? Fasting. Fasting can be very beneficial to your health. All these poor people that I've talked to over these years, I can't fast ever. Come on. There is healing in fasting. No, there just is. And then lastly, Genesis 2, 9, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Some of the things that God has created are good for food. And again, take this and this is actually 4,000 or 6,000 years ago, eyes. But at the time of the writing of the, you know, the Bible, you know, 2,000 years ago, there are, there, there are 
what God says, food that is good or good for food. When you start eating healthier food, your body is going to be healthier. People that say, I don't like to drink water. Like, look, you drink all the soda you want. You drink all the imitation, you know, drinks all you want. I mean, drink it all you want, but that's going to contribute to your unhealthiness. Your body is 78% water. Start drinking water. Your body will be healthier. Cut out all the garbage. Man, it's been years since I drank sodas. I, I'm telling you, there's certain, look, the fuel that you provide your body, and we just gave you some examples. The Word of God, pleasant words, a merry heart, fasting, and good food. It'll, it'll help you with your health. It really will. All right, number 27. we got to hurry. We're almost done. When backslidden, we need healing of the soul. When backslidden, we need healing of the soul. Hosea 14, 4, I will heal, heal their backsliding. I will, I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. Psalm 41, verse 4, I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. If you're backslidden, it might be that you need healing from God, and maybe that's why you're not being healed, is if you're not getting right with God. Amen? Come on. Number 28, heaven is a place of eternal healing. Revelation 22, 1 and 2. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the tree, street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bore twelve manner of fruits, and yielded a fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now, I don't know what that all means, but I know heaven is an eternal healing place. Whatever that means. Number 29 and last. Again, I wish I could have two or three hours to teach this, but I just don't. So let's just give you the point, read the scripture, and make a small, small application. Number 29, there is a gift of healing given to some by God. There is a gift of healing given to some by God. I have read 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 13, and I can't see a single place in the scripture where it says this, this is passed away. So let's just read it. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 1 through 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away. Now we're not talking to Jew, a Jewish church here. We're talking about a Gentile church. Ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are diversities of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. So we see in the church there are different gifts, administrations, and operations. You see that? Okay, let's continue. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work of that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Now, we're speaking about the church here. Look at verses 27 through 31. Now, ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Now, watch this. Now, watch this. And God hath set some in the church. First, apostles. Now, I don't believe apostles are around today because the qualification of an apostle was they had to be around during the time of John the Baptist and until the ascension of Jesus. So that tells me that it's not a time period thing, but it's an event thing. Apostles were alive during the time of Christ from the baptism of John to the ascension of Jesus. That's that's what it says in the scripture. But that was the first ones that were given to the church. Now watch this. God has set some in the church first, apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Now there are no timeline or, or disqualifiers for prophets today. 
Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So all I'm going to say about this, and I don't have time to develop it too much, is simply this. This is what God gave to the church. And there's nothing in the Bible that says all of it expired. There's nothing. We need to stop being afraid of the Bible. You know, sometimes people say, well, in, in, in 1 Corinthians 13, it says tongues has expired. Well, I don't agree. But even if it did say that, why are you saying the gifts of healing has expired? expired? Why are the gifts of miracles expired as well? I, I just believe that one of the problems we don't see a lot of this today is our churches are so spiritually sick and void of what the bible actually has to say about churches now again the devil has his counterfeit for all of this and i in no way shape or form endorse charismatic approaches to any of this but i'm simply saying that the bible is true and there's nothing in the bible that says the gifts of healing has expired nothing and for people to say it was only given to the 12 apostles we already read where it wasn't it was given to the 70 and then in mark 16 he told the apostles whoever believes the message you give about salvation they'll have the gifts of healing too now we also knew that signs of healing were given because of the jews gentiles don't require that so it may not be as open but i do believe that god can heal people today and we don't need to be afraid of it. Amen? Heavenly Father, thank you for this Bible study. Please bless us as we make application in our lives. Help us to be right with you. Maybe some of our unwellness is because of the fuel that we provide our body. Maybe we just have bad fuel. Maybe some of it is because of evil spirits that we've allowed into our lives. Maybe some of it is because we just simply don't believe. Or maybe it's because... We don't go to you first. We go to physicians first. And then for those of us that are serving you and living for you, maybe you don't want us to be healed because you want more power to be on us in your grace so we can accomplish more. But whatever the case may be, Lord, help us to understand direct application and help us to live for you. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. If you're here tonight and God spoke to you in a very clear and direct way,